Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about RMS norm. Yes, we have talked about this in our previous video where I explained advancements about Lama. But let's learn this in a more detail. So the question is, what is this? And why are we even talking about this? And why it's important to learn? Okay, so let's first talk about what? It's a simple normalization technique that you know. So you must be thinking about, if you're not familiar with normalization, let me tell you about normalization. So we use normalization techniques to stabilize our training. So with this normalization techniques, we can stabilize our training process. So, so that's why you can see RMS norm is used to stabilize our training because it's a normalization technique. Now let's talk about why. Why are we like learning about RMS norm, not other, other normalization techniques? So uh, nowadays, like many state-of-the-art transformer models are now adopting RMS norm for better performance. So in my previous video, I have explained how Lama and others are using this normalization technique to optimize training and achieve better results with this RMS norm. Okay, so uh, what, well, what were we using before this? There must be some other normalization techniques, right? So yeah, before this, if we talk about transformers, then in a standard transformers, we were using layer normalization because that was the best at that time. So uh, I'll just first tell you about something about this layer normalization thing because then we'll get a better understanding how this RMS norm is improving things. So in layer normalization, there were two key parameters. One is recentering, second one is rescaling. Re recentering means here we try to brought our mean value close to zero and rescaling invariance means we'll try to ensure that the variance remains one okay so this is the whole concept of layer normalization we were using two variables one is mean one is variance that is the important so just remember this thing so uh, now what about rms now so first let's go to their paper they have some hypothesis to tell you so the rms now paper the author suggested that it's actually the rescaling invariance that plays a crucial role in the success of layer norm. So they are saying that recentering is doesn't matter. It's the rescaling part which is playing the crucial role. So you can see in this paper they are saying we hypothesis that the rescaling invariance is the reason for success, not the recentering. Okay, so they are it's their hypothesis, and it it was working pretty fine. Okay, so uh, you can see. In this way, if we just take this hypothesis, so RMS norm simplifies many things. RMS norm, RMS norm simplifies layer norm by completely removing the mean statistics. Okay, so we are not using mean. You can see the formula here. We are not using mean. So we were having two things in our layer norm. One is mean and one is variance. Here you can see we are not calculating mean. So yeah, this does come with a trade-off as it sacrifices some of the benefits of complete normalization, but it's working pretty well. So now you must be thinking, but why is RMS norm becoming more popular? It's because it requires less competition. You can see we have already removed one statistics. So yes, it will always require less competition. Unlike layer norm, which calculates both mean and sigma, RMS norm calculate or computes only variance. This makes it more efficient, which is why it's often preferred in transformers in like, uh, you can say in Lama, in Mistral, there are other models in traditional uh, transformer models. They prefer RMS norm over earlier normalization. So uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Let's meet in our next video for with another interesting topic.